everyone. Today on IC Tales, we have a dynamic individual who has been working to mend flaws in relationships. Yes, you heard that right. The beautiful lady on my left, Miss Deepika, is a relationship coach. So welcome, ma'am. I'm so happy to have you on board. How was your day? It was amazing, and thank you so much, Hiba, for inviting me here. It's always a pleasure to connect with individuals and share the stories and impact the society. So very nice to know that. So without holding up further, I'm sure there are so many people who are excited to know about this entire process. So tell us, what is relationship coaching? So if I have to tell you in a few words what relationship coaching really means, then it really means that giving yourself the power to decide what kind of individual you should be inviting in your life. Because most of the times, not most of the time, it is always like that. that whenever it comes to relationship we always only think from heart you know that i love this person so i want to be with this person but the thing is there's a lot more goes into finding the right partner because that partner will be part of your life will be part of your thought process your decision making just about everything so what i really do is that if you see my profile in the relationship coaching my speciality is healing from toxic relationships yeah. because nowadays we see that a lot of this is happening a lot where one partner is giving in 100% and the other partner is not even giving 10% and that is what results in a toxic relationship where one partner is just giving and the other partner is taking you know so what i really do is that i help individuals especially professionals to identify a toxic relationship and then heal from it because till time we don't heal we will always end up with the same kind of partner you know unhappy stressed like that So speaking of all this why did you choose to pursue this field of relationship and personal coaching so the thing is that i have been a marketing girl from last 10 years i have a marketing big mba in marketing i also have a mba in supply chain mm-hmm. but you know like working from last 10 years in marketing i have achieved what i really wanted to do in professional front okay i could carry on this for the next 25 years till the time i'm alive marketing but what really happens is that relationship is something that i'm really obsessed with marketing is my passion mm-hmm. but obsession is one step ahead of passion so i was you know just like i'm a very spiritual person mm-hmm. so i always kind of ask myself you know i ask the universe what is next for me mm-hmm. and that is when i realized that in a following the passion let's do something that we always obsessed with because that is what i have been like people have been asking me about relationships all my life you know and then i was like if i can give so much advice so much of gyan to all these people why not put that out on the instagram out on the market so you know that's how it so it was a big decision to change something that has been your career for 10 years but i think that we always have a choice to decide the next chapter of our life you know yes. so that's how and it's nice to see that you're doing great on this front so i hope you have a lot more good to come your way thank you yes uh, moving on to my next question uh, when i was researching about you i also noticed something so can you tell us the importance of having a good mindset and what is the power of manifestation so the thing is these both you may say uh, like mindset is the first step and then manifestation is the second step till the time you don't master mindset you cannot do manifestation okay. now to answer your question what how why mindset is really important is let's suppose that uh one morning you your boss calls you up and he no the, let's suppose that the next morning you have to go for a really important meeting mm-hmm. and you are dressed up and everything and you move out of the house and it starts raining mm-hmm. the minute it starts raining you're all drenched and you start cursing that why did it start raining today mm-hmm. so you your mood gets really spoiled yes. now something happens the second time because of which your mood gets spoiled again we kya hoga the entire day will go bad that is like if i have to give tell you in simple word that is mindset mm-hmm. like whatever we you know whatever we think whatever we feel on a daily basis mm-hmm. that becomes our personality that is how we become like i'm i'm very sure a lot of people even you because you take so many interview mm-hmm. it must have happened with you like you see someone and you feel wow this person is so positive you right. see someone and you think oh my god inside of her heart you must be thinking this interview is going to be so cranky right so that is how mindset is. it starts reflecting on our you know process on our face 
how we feel about life in general are we a positive person are we pessimistic are we optimistic and that is why mindset is important because that is how it helps us to you know take the right decisions mm. now if you have a right mindset if you have a positive mindset manifestations becomes really easy a lot of people still don't believe on law of attraction they don't believe on universal energy but just because they don't believe it doesn't mean it does not exist because whatever this is a truth whatever you think that is what your life will be your thoughts are things so Correct. if you think that you are rich you're getting clients you're a money magnet you're attracting all opportunities mm-hmm. that is what will end up but if you keep cursing yourself if you keep thinking that i don't get opportunities then that is exactly what is going to help you know it's going to uh, what do you say it's going to happen with your life so when you have a positive mindset you can manifest very easily mm-hmm. so they both are interconnected in some way yeah so like if you don't master mindset a lot of people what they do is they see these youtube videos mm-hmm. where people journal and they have these you know what do you say Mm, eureka moments where whatever they wanted they got in their life but they failed to see that that these people received what they wanted because they believed they had the positive mindset okay. people forget the mindset part and then they think that mind manifestation is not working mm-hmm. so yes i am sure people will learn that you know these two things are they go together so and they go hand in hand so thank you so much for sharing that knowledge uh, let's dig in deeper into your profession so since you are a relationship coach what could be the possible reasons behind failed relationships in today's world so one of the biggest reason and i think this uh, attributes to around 80 maybe 60 to 70% is expectations but from a wrong person okay. it is like going to a chinese restaurant and thinking we'll get indian chart it's not possible right yes. and then if you fight with the manager saying that where is my chart manager will be like are you nuts <laughs> right the same thing is with relationships what happens is that so many of us mm. like i have noticed is that whoever ends up in a toxic relationship they have some kind of back story in their childhood Right. some kind of trauma some kind of abuse that they must have gone through you know and that is the reason they either want like for example if a girl grows up in a family where the father was not really there or mm-hmm. the father figure was absent or he did not make her feel secure so what would happen is she look for a partner who will mm-hmm. make her feel secure mm-hmm. now when she goes to search for such a partner that partner should be dominant because in her mind the father figures of dominant right mm-hmm. so now what what will happen she is with a partner who is dominant yes. they he will expect her to be submissive mm-hmm. because of this what problems will arise he will tell her not to do this she'll be like why can't i do it right and then he will be like okay if you don't do it then there will be fights and then he will tell her i'm going to leave you then she will get scared then she'll be like okay i'll do what you're telling me to do mm-hmm. so what's happening now is instead of a relationship it is like a master Mm-hmm. and a follower thing where he tells her what to do and she is following so this is what happens you know you have wrong expectations mm-hmm. you have the expectations from a wrong person right the second type of relationship might be now this is not the case that this happens only to girls okay mm-hmm. like there are a lot of guys also nowadays that are suffering from toxic relationship mm-hmm. where the girl is trying to dominate him she doesn't trust him if he goes out with his girlfriends of course if he made her feel somewhere insecure and then she reacts it's okay but if he has not done anything then and, and then too she doesn't trust him mm-hmm. then that is kind of toxic again because now you're trying to control his life that you cannot go out with your friends you know why are you talking to your colleagues you cannot go to business meetings you know there are a lot of things that happens like that so this is the reason this is one of the reason what happens why the toxic relationships happen expectation from wrong person mm-hmm. second they think that the happiness that they want the peace of mind that they want in their life depends on other person mm-hmm. so this is different from expectation because now they are dependent also the right. expectation to is there only now they are dependent also correct right. imagine you being dependent on your mom all your life for food mm-hmm. at a point will come where your mom will also get frustrated she will be like what are you doing mm-hmm. you're grown up i have taken care of you now do something for yourself this is what happens when the relationship is too dependent one partner is totally dependent for the emotional needs mm-hmm. so that what happens is 
if the partner is in a cranky mood the other partner is expecting that partner to make me happy now he is in a cranky mood or she is in a cranky mood and she doesn't talk or he doesn't talk properly what will happen why are you not talking to me nicely you all you don't love me why do you always want to fight but what's happening is that this person is dependent on the other person there is no right. fault right yes he came from some situation you're not understanding and you're just babbling out that love me this mm-hmm. so these are the two main reason why it happens you know expectations dependency now all of this will lead to fights stress there mm-hmm. is no healthy communication mm-hmm. so you understanding what happens yes. is in the end miscommunication stress level and then there will be days one of you day one or two days when these two partners will be very happy but the minute something happens that imbalance happens mm-hmm. yes so it i it, hope it was not very stretch <laughs> <laughs> it was very nicely constructed and you brought so many elements together so i'm happy that you said that and moving on to the nice part what could be the possible reasons behind successful relationships so exact opposite of what i just said you know expecting but from the right person expecting in a realistic way you know mm-hmm. not seeing kgl not seeing karan johar movies and expecting mm-hmm. rosy love stories that doesn't happen compromise is always there you have to understand your partner mm-hmm. so proper understanding is very important second you cannot be dependent on your partner for your emotional needs you mm-hmm. have to be happy as a person first and then you can be happy with anyone right. but if you are a sad soul you know in hindi we say dukhi atma mm-hmm. if you yourself are dukhi inside how do you expect other person to make you happy that's not possible yes. so it's very important that you don't be totally like you should be dependent but not 100% mm-hmm. be like 30 40% emotionally dependent on your partner rest 60% be your own pillar mm-hmm. you know and third point would be understanding compromise if like let's suppose you decided a movie date and something happens and you are not able to go through so that doesn't mean you guys fight or he or he or she should not fight with the partner mm. you are not taking me you don't love me right. so successful relationship really depends on communication mm. understanding mm. you know the more they talk the more what do you say the more misunderstanding gets mm. resolved you know and so like if you see in a toxic relationship whenever a fight happens one partner will go silent yes so they give the other partner silent treatment mm-hmm. and it is scientifically proven that if you love someone very much and if that person is not talking to you is very silent it hurts equally as it hurts physically mm-hmm. you know? so that is what happens in a toxic relation you go silent when has in a healthy or a positive relationship they talk out the differences and they resolve that mm-hmm. so these could be the three main key points of a healthy relationship i hope people will have a lot of uh, insights from this because this is a topic that people really need to have knowledge about so thank you so much wow. ma'am for sharing your insights uh, moving on mm-hmm. uh, what advice do you have for people to identify signs of bad or toxic relationships So now this is one question that you know as a coach I can give a really good answer but then it depends on people to accept the answer because what happens is whenever we find some fault in a relationship the first thing we do is we ignore it. right we think no something like that cannot happen with me and then they go into denial mode mm-hmm. what happens when you go into denial mode problems will keep going on and they stop accepting the problems mm-hmm. now emotionally they are not recognizing their own emotions they are not recognizing how they are feeling inside so just a second sure just a second now let, let me answer this question from a girl's perspective the same can be done to guy also mm-hmm. so imagine a girl is not ready to accept that her partner is bit toxic he he gives a silent treatment he's mm-hmm. trying to dominate her life he's trying to take all decisions for her she doesn't accept this what will happen she will be in a stress mode she mm-hmm. will not say this to him that what you're doing is wrong to me because she fears that what if he breaks up with mm-hmm. me you know so that that is one of the biggest reason you know what people do that in spite of seeing the sign they don't raise their voice because they fear that a relationship may break now relationship breaking is not the real issue you know what they are afraid of is being with themselves this is what i posted yesterday on my story on my post that people don't break up because they are afraid that they have to be with themselves 
they're too afraid no we are too afraid to live it out sir our own thoughts so they don't raise the voice now that girl will not raise the voice she will not tell her partner that what you're doing is wrong it's hurting me mm. so now what will happen is she's putting all her emotions inside mm. and keeps building up and what happens when you keep you have a coke bottle you keep mm. shaking it and you don't let it fizz out one day it will burst right yeah. so that girl will have emotional meltdown Mm-hmm. constant crying at night not doing anything she'll be like what should i do i'm confused she'll keep questioning herself why this is happening with me but what is the main issue that when you saw the sign you did not tell your partner and that is the reason why all of this is happening right. so i would suggest that whoever is going through a toxic relationship don't be afraid to talk about it to your partner don't be afraid if the relationship breaks because if a relationship is really toxic then no matter how many years you guys have been together that relationship is meant to be broken you're not mm-hmm. supposed to be with a person who gives you more tears than happiness who gives you more stress than comfort mm-hmm. you know like i feel that when i go to work in the morning and when i come back home and i open the door the person i'm seeing in front of myself i should feel happy from inside you know most of the people don't feel this when mm-hmm. they come home they're stressed what fight will happen to them if you have these kind of thoughts when you come back home sit down with yourself maybe with your best friend maybe hire a coach like me or someone like that who can help you sort your thoughts out and then take a decision i think that was more like a reality check because these issues are there but we just don't pay attention to it so thank yeah. you so much for bringing that out to a lot of people uh, moving on to my next question uh, you know i'm sure in your life you would have had some situation which was like a turning point for you or something which you learned from from it with something very valuable so if there is any situation like that can you share something about it mm, if you are asking from relationship point of view anything or just was, yeah. which was just which is had a turning point in your life and you just became a whole new person So actually my dad was diagnosed with cancer in 2016 mm-hmm. and luckily that was the first stage mm-hmm. so like i was i have always been a mature person but i think that there was a turning point in my life that was when i started my own business mm-hmm. otherwise i was doing a corporate job so because i was in a job i couldn't take leaves the way i wanted mm-hmm. and i had i left my job and you know i started my business because i saw my dad you know like i was I, mean, i really love my dad a lot and that was really scary because there is so much misconception about cancer also okay like people this this scare you you know oh god cancer oh my god oh my god and they they bring out the worst possibly that can happen you know so that is that thing really scared me but thank god that showed it was a first stage it got cleared but my dad lost a lot of weight Mm-hmm. he like the way he looks today and the way he used to look before is you know like a huge difference 1000% mm-hmm. so that is what really changed my perspective towards the life and towards this relationship thing that is the reason why i am emphasizing people to you know be in relationships to have people at home that make you happy mm-hmm. because you know you never know about life you know so why you want to go through stress or why you want to give yourself you know like it's like a curse you know living in a toxic relation you're always crying you're always stressed out mm-hmm. you're always questioning your self esteem mm-hmm. you don't feel happy when you go out mm-hmm. you look at yourself in the mirror and you like i don't look good there's so much there's nothing good you know so like why people go through that i don't know that is the reason why i wanted to start this thing and you know like encourage motivate people to you know take stand for themselves it's not easy but it is really necessary to do this so yeah adversity did bring out the best in you and now you're living your life the right way you wanted to do it so yeah. great i'm so happy to know that and i think we did enough of the serious talking and just all this knowledgeable stuff let's move on to something fun uh, apart okay. from just you know you said you were in the marketing field apart from that and apart from being a relationship coach what do you think you would have been today anything out of the box i would have been a travel agent because my dad runs a tours and travel business so i have been helping him in that from like eighth standard mm-hmm. so like now also on weekends like my dad we have our own office so my dad goes there from monday to friday but travel travel business is something like it is never off 
and because two years covid was there now a lot of people want to travel saturday sunday also the phone is ringing non stop we want this ticket we want that that so if i would have not done anything i would have been a travel agent booking tickets and <laughs> hotels for people i'd still do that on the weekends just today i made a flight ticket for someone flying to patna mm-hmm. and that person was flying for the first time okay mm-hmm. he was like just 19 years old and he was able to save money and he wanted mm-hmm. to fly oh my god he had so many questions so i would have definitely been a travel agent if i was not a marketing girl if i was not doing relationship coaching very very nice to know that you know and i'm and i'm happy that by asking this question we both are smiling and you know this interview has now come to an end with both of us having a smile on our faces